the, the, the who's the favorite and who's the underdog in this matchup. It's more for the heroic side of things with Yabby coming in, with them bringing him over from Flames and the impact he was able to have on this team. Can they actually just like get off and running? Like when, when they make it through to the group stage, because I have, I have, I have I, you can get as close to 100% guarantee. It's close. <laughs> as close as you can get to it. Okay. That they're going to be there in that group stage. That's the question when they face those better teams, the top teams. Can they just kind of pick up right where they left off or is there going to be an adjustment period? And everything from that interview sounded like Yabby was saying it's going to be off to the races. Well, let's find out. Shush, one good kill there. Kadian still with the duelies, and he's going to make quick work of Torsi and JDC both, leaving Dexter on his own. Set of duelies uh, by himself in the middle. But the bomb has been lost to him, heading towards that B bomb site, or so the A bomb site. So, might be a little bit tricky for him to get back into this round, although he is going to be trying to slow play it. I feel like the more time that passes here, the more people are going to start to show up. Tessis is even making sure that he's not seeing through middle. He's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, he's just, he's he's hoping and praying for a mistake that, that ain't coming whatsoever. Kadian spots him out as well. That means the players from the bomb site can start challenging. Dexter's only able to get the one. And that's a pistol round in the first round on the board for Heroic. And not a bad stop. They had, they had a single flashbang that kind of, once they were already in middle, I think they might have tried to throw that towards Donut, and it, I didn't think it actually failed. So I think some of this maybe was meant to be set up with a flashbang that never really made it from the mouse side of things. Yeah, well, and even if it does, right, that flashbang is going to force someone off the angle, but you still had two bodies in there to deal True. with. It's not like you're ever going to blind someone for three seconds to give you any kind of crazy advantage. It's just to get that first step in, create some space that you can actually make the attack happen. And, Kadian shuts it down regardless. Two kills of those duelies. That would just complete Kadian's like villain arc if he became the uh, the duely master. <laughs> the duely master, yeah. yeah. You know what? He'd You're be right. like Caster Troy from Face Off. <laughs> <laughs> he's already, he's already, you know, going down that road. So, community's already <laughs> yeah in the Twitch chat yelling at him. So why not? Why not to uh, keep going? There's a flashbang for you right through. No one's there. No one's home. I don't think Frozen heard that. He has nope. not even turned to consider it. So. I mean, already a severe disadvantage, no armor, no upgraded pistols, just one flashbang for Mal's, but now the map has shrunk, and now all the information is passed over to Heroic, and Yabby's going to have a good time. Him and Stown combined for three, four quick kills, and there's Katie. I'll be honest, I'm, a, I'm actually a little bit surprised at how quickly everyone seems to be just throwing Mal's aside in this one. I don't feel like it's such a... Okay. Say like almost 100%. Would you, do you want to do you want to try and do you want to make your case here, or is that where you want to leave it? I just always get nervous when I look at these kind of matchups and think, yeah, this isn't an easy predict. I feel like I've been burned so many times in past tournaments. Okay, so it's just the past that's hurt you so much. Yeah, it makes me a little bit nervous. So just, no, no Counter Strike reasoning to to back Miles at the moment. I don't know. They have a lot of firepower <laughs> on this team. Like, I don't know. Like I'm just, I'm not, I I'm not as convinced. Okay. Not as convinced as everyone else. That's fair. Well, we'll find out. Smoke's down. Tess is going to be aggressive. One more player to find inside the smoke, and Shush has got him from the backside. And that's off the early kill on Cadian. So a huge, uh, you know, a little bit of, I don't know if a mistake, but definitely disappointing from the point of view of Mouse once they get Cadian in the middle, but then they lose two outside of B, and it kind of sets them back a little bit. This view inside Temple of the closed off choke point is really messing with my brain. Yes. Yabby seems to be chilling. Shush. Is there to peek off contact, and actually he'll be the first four, but Moss just missed the timing. He still recovers well, can only get the one. Transfer would have been near impossible, and the bomb's coming up late. And it's still got to pass Shush, which it cannot do. Yeah, so quick with that M4A1. JDC, 50 seconds, which is a huge upgrade in terms of trying to clutch it. He's going to be taking down Tessus. Now they know where he is, and the bomb is still... She said quite far away, so they has to sort of track back across the bomb site, try and take the fights in the meantime, and then get back and maybe put the bomb down. I'm not even sure if any of that's going to be possible, especially not Shush. On top of the box, popular position these days, and um, yeah, nice round out of Shush there. Yeah, quad kill for him. That was really impressive, starting with that kill inside the smoke over towards the B bomb site, moving across the map on rotation. Three to nothing for Heroic early on here on Ancient. And not even a bomb plant. And not even a bomb plant. Yeah, that's a bit uh, that's a bit depressing on all on its own. And this is a round where, I mean, because they had the SMGs, they decide, you know, let's rush outside of B. Not that they won't do that later. I mean, that's become a popular yeah. battleground. But with the SMGs, that MP9, you see how powerful it is. You can just keep running. So 
even if they lose some of them, it's not really a huge giveaway. It's a little bit of a bonus round for Heroic, and they're going to love it. Stown's up for able to upgrade to an AK-47, and Kadian just goes right back to the SMG, so looking for some bonus money that he can build up for when he wants to bring the AWP out later on in this game. Perhaps next round if he's to go down here. Miles is stalled out for the moment behind smokes, behind utility. Flashbang over from outside the A staging area. Gives them a chance in middle for the Deagles to go to work. Stown's going to peek back out. Kadian's going to push forward. And Mouse is getting shut down again. Without doing any damage, I mean, this is one of the things we love to bring up, but it, it does, it's because it's important, right? Getting a couple of kills, maybe two or three in a round like this with the Deagle, absolutely can start to build that comeback. If that doesn't happen here, then Mouse are in a position all of a sudden where they have to fight through a lot of rounds, they've started to win back-to-back -back rounds to crush the heroic economy. So they are they're setting themselves up in a way where the yeah the eventual comeback is going to be a really difficult one. There's already a lot of money built up on the Danish side, and Maus are still struggling to find the opening. And we just saw in the in the previous series here on the mainstream as well with uh, movie star riders and their comeback on that second half as well. And we've we've heard the conversation ever since essentially the major. These ancient T sides can be very very tough. And even though some of the changes have been made to give some advantages, obviously, uh, I don't think we've fully gotten the entire development strategically of how the map can actually improve for offensive sides just yet. That'll take a bit more time for all the teams. Very vocal for Mouse Sports during the timeout. Op is picked up on Torzi. Op is picked up on Kadian as well. And that's the matchup the desk highlighted in the pregame as well. Kadian is happy. It's going to be a, you know, a good sign. I have no idea what this emotion is on that screen right there. I, I have it's no just... clue. He looks almost angry, but he's laughing. Uh, Exist had a smile on his face, which is not an easy thing to do. No, true. I think it's. I think he's just excited. I think it's a technical, technical issue. It's turned into that too. Well, why not? I was gonna say it feels like maybe not exclusively, but a lot of these days on ancient, a lot of the fight is gonna be determined based on who's gonna be winning the outside of B fight. And it feels like there are some players in the world right now that are really good at coming out of that Jaguar tunnel and taking fights all over the place. Um, you know, we talked about it with Rain and Carrigan on phase lately, how they've been sort of, you know, trying to play around with that a little bit, but both of them seem to be doing a good job. If you have someone in that position that can really fight, then yeah. It, it does a lot for you. Well, and uh, yeah, I, and there's also, I mean, just a variety of different smokes and utility and angles that can be that can be thrown into the case there. So, I mean, it, it's also just an idea of sometimes you don't even know what you're going into until you get there, and that's not a fun environment to be in. But you're right, some players do seem to just straight up thrive in it. Four to nothing. Frozen with a one-tap look up the B ramp. They need this round. We'll see you on that AWP. A little bit of a topic on the desk, and Kadian has got his on the other side. So I feel like when we try to pair or pit Orbers versus each other, they don't always actually have to run into each other on the battlefield for that to be the main difference. But impact in the round is certainly something that we're going to be thinking about and looking at here. And they've taken a lot of mid control, but look at this aggressive posturing outside of the A bomb site. Bimas is ready for it though, and he'll take down Shush. That is a good read. Now, is he going to expect a second player? It's really uncommon for there to even be two players on A at all. So for them to be two this far pushed up, he's doing a great job looking out, but Jabby's still going to catch him. Right, heads up play for Bimas. It's, it's cool to see him actually even look for it. Yeah, but just instantly shut down. There's the impact from the off, at least for the Mal's side of things. And that's going to make Kadian worried. He's got to rotate over, flashbang and Molotov thrown out just to make sure no hit is impending. Buy himself some time to get into a comfortable position. And now is smoke. And he's going to have to put a little bit of faith in that smoke that nobody's coming through. Off angle towards Donut. He's got the first. Frozen finds a kill. That's a lurk outside of the B bomb site over towards Jaguar. But the main thrust is still at this A bomb site, and both heroic defenders are here. Well, smoke is going to make it a little bit tricky with the AWP. See if they can get the bomb plant down on the other side. They're certainly going for it right now. And there it is. And now they just need to stay out of the line of sight of these remaining heroic players sneaking in. But that is being covered. Torsi well aware. And that's certainly a moment right there where you could tell the difference in the map and how much I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, he's so safe in standing there. Whereas before, that would have been almost impossible. Well, and just, oh, it would have been straight up impossible. Not just that after the plant, though. Even just the uh, how quickly Mouse is able to progress onto the bomb site because of that change as well. Just, just a, a crazy choke point you no longer have to worry about. So first round on the board for Mouse's attack. 
Kadian trying to save the op. I don't think Mal's can be too dedicated to the hunt. I think this is about as far as they'll go. Tuck themselves into corners. Another face-off reference, of course. <laughs> it's on your mind. We just need mirrors. Mirrors now, everywhere. So I, we've been saying for a while there should be a, a space off too. Someone should make that. Nicholas Cage said the same thing. I'm right. ready. It's, it's gonna be time. Well, four to one, and round number six coming up. It's a really good start, and yeah, look at the money dwindling on the heroic side. So one more round like this for Mouse, and at least they're gonna have a, I think, a shot at getting some real rounds on the board here in the first half. But um, if they can't win this one again, it's going to continue the struggle a little bit further. Heavy bombardment in the middle from that CT side made it very hard for the T's to do much of anything. And they're also locked outside of the B hallway there. You can just see from the lean as well from Heroic's defense on the minimap. I mean, two players in the middle, three players at the B bomb site. The, the closest defender to that A site was just KDN with a deep angle with the AWP. So Heroic not prioritizing that bomb site to open up rounds. They'll have to come back to it later. And trusting that Mauser is going to be playing a game where they go for mid control, where they go for B lane control. Torsi, he's got some backup here, but interesting stuff walking in like that. A little bit risky potentially. Jabby going to be finding Frozen. Smoke up right behind him. That's some great timing. They, now they've made it to the A bomb site, but the bomb is so far off. Like they, they've actually, this is a huge, huge mistake. This is a small detail that's gotten away from Mal. So even if they take the bomb site, Heroic's going to be able to rotate over into position. The bomb is going to be like 10 seconds late getting into this site as well. So there's a lot of time that Mal's have to hold onto this and not get picked off. What's a little bit strange is it doesn't really look like Heroic know yet what's going on. Ooh, there's the pickoff from Kadian. Nicely done. Jabby moving up, but he's going to get double swiped there. And JDC able to bring him down. And Bimas with an AK, but still, he's got that angle covered. But he had not even realize he was out of the open. Kadian is doing real work in this round. A nice triple kill. And as you said, <laughs> they're so delayed that the rest of Heroic started to sort of gravitate towards that A-bomb site. If the bomb had been there with like the, the main point when they get to the entrance of the A-site and they actually start moving forward, that, that's an entirely different round. But, uh, I mean, just what a... What a disaster to have happen for you if you're Mouse. Another timeout being called as they want to talk things over, and that's a painful mistake to make. As you mentioned, that round could have been a potential reset, could have been potential control of the economy going over to Mouse, and just it all goes to waste. It also feels like, I mean, I appreciate Tosi wanting to say the fight maybe towards anyone who's in the in those back hallways behind the bomb site leading into CT spawn, but at the same time, is it really necessary when that when the, the wall is blocked off? I mean, for the yeah. if you if you have the bomb leading in, right? If you have smokes or anything else, maybe you just block it off. You obviously need to either take care of that or CT spawn or do not. Like you can't leave all three positions, then you never get to plant the bomb, right? But they they did, I think in the follow-up, right? They swung and took down one player coming in, Shush, I think maybe from uh, from Donut. Yeah. So they had like a way to, to to get in there, right? They could have planted the bomb if it had been there. But maybe swinging Ooh. to fight the AWP might be a little bit of a mistake. Here we go, yeah, Rush coming into it. Tech Nines are out, AK in the hands of Torsi, and they can't slow this down. They kind of have to keep going now that they've played their hand, but Jabby won't let them. Huge double. Oh, this is nasty. So many weird off angles that you could never expect with these smokes down, and once the main initial hit gets swept aside, way too difficult to make it work afterwards. Dexter just looking for economic damage, and that does not happen. Five players survive for Heroic. They are up six to one here on Ancient. What's he saying? Whew. Give me some translation. <laughs> it's not loud enough. I need more. I need more volume. I think he's he's just hyping about. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get the replay at some just point. Just standard boilerplate hype comments. Yeah, something like that. Oh, all right. That looked like it was about to be a teammate falling victim to that. That did look like it was about to be a bad day for someone. Six to one, and uh, round number eight throwing or putting out the Molotov, come charging right through, and Dexter and Frozen really trusting that Molotov a lot. And I feel like that's not a completely unusual play. We've seen that before, um, but they just got caught. Kadian in the middle to take down JDC, and they're getting wrecked early on here. They might have, I mean, they they've surely would have heard that Molotov getting extinguished. They probably yeah. just thought it was a standard smoke. Hiroko's going to play behind it, but you're exactly right. That play happens with frequency, and... Sound and Tessis made that push without any hesitation. That was going to happen the whole way through. Planned out a spawn. 
Yeah, it's definitely not the start that they're hoping for your mouse, is it? Especially not after a timeout that you've just called and you've yeah. obviously made a decision. I mean, look, we see that we see that frequently as well when, when teams call timeouts as the other team decides to just say, you know what, they probably came up with a cool plan. Let's make sure they can actually execute it. Let's get aggressive. Let's get it in their face. Let's make sure they don't have the space to pull out whatever they discussed during the timeout. And it works perfectly here in round number eight. You aren't getting through this stack. Yeah, absolutely not. Great discipline on Heroic as well to wait for the, the trap to be sprung over there instead of someone, you know, Tess is here, peeks a little bit later. But if he'd started by peeking and they would have been able to take him down before anything else happened, then it provides a little bit more safety. Ultimately, it's going to be another good round for Heroic, 7-1 to one in their favor. They seem to be hard to stop right now. Some of the other teams that we've seen in the past that have done a little bit better on the T side of Ancient, it feels like a lot of it has been winning some of the mid fights. And getting in there early and just trying to beat, play around the Molotovs and the and just try and I don't know ignore the HEs as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, not you an can't easy. Can't play around them, can you? No, you can't play around them, but you can't really ignore them when they're blowing up at your feet either. Oh. Tough times. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you've ever tried to ignore a grenade. It's uh, you can't. You have to be an expert at meditation to make it through that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. But still, without because winning the mid fight is what distracts, what takes away from this otherwise lockdown outside of B that's just so hard to get through. Pistols back in the hands of Mouse as we head into round number nine. Setting up a little bit of smoke towards top of middle, but looks like they still want to try and see if they can make their way through, maybe to attack that B bomb site. I think part of the problem, and you've kind of, you've, you've alluded to it here with your discussion. Okay. What do you think about that one? That little smoke that we saw thrown out just there. A little oopsie? I think it's great. Okay. Uh, one of the things you were alluding to, I was going to say, just in terms of you know attacking mid, all well and good, but Mouse has not had a whole lot of success on opening engagements. They've only won two of them in this game so far, so uh, even if you're going mid and you're not winning those fights, there's another one won by Heroic, but that's a good rebuttal to Deagle shots. However, those players came from mid. They didn't come from the B bomb site, so Mouse knows they don't have a standing to actually push forward into the site, and instead they'll run right into Cadian. Yeah, he's about to get flanked too, though, so there could be an opening here. Not a lot of Time. They need to move pretty quickly. He's on the other side of the smoke with a tech nine. Now, it could have been a double, but they actually find a way into this. is a huge round. Might be one of the best rounds so far for Mouse, and it's kind of just out of some heroic aggression that gets called by those Deagles. So Tessis and Stau are going to have to try and see if they can get back in and win the round. It'll be Mouse and Frozen on the other side. They desperately need this. <laughs> yeah, they're so far behind right now. Good headshot to start with. And be Mouse with a Deagle, one versus two. And they have plenty of time. The bomb is only just parted. No smoke or anything. They're going to go fight him, and Stan will find him instantly. Yeah, tough break in that last 2v2. And a little bit of a reminder to Heroic to, you know, keep the focus. Yeah, I think Cadian's probably thinking that he could have had a double kill there coming through the smoke. Yeah, and he could have. Listen, about that smoke over at the B-bomb side, yeah. right? I realize, obviously, it doesn't do anything, but let's say they had thrown a Molotov that lands, like, you know, if he, like, if he just read it, he would have looked like a genius. And I appreciate that. Sometimes you have to play for that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. to... You play for the low percentage so you look like a god. Exactly. Okay. It's not so good for winning tournaments. <laughs> we are in an important tournament, but, you know. Yeah, very important tournament. Playoff stage, day number one. But it'll give you a lot of Reddit points. Yeah, That's you would... That's also important. You would get some, some Reddit karma for that one. Jabby up close, the flashbang goes way too deep and another double kill opening for Heroic's defense. And this is the other problem if you want to allude back to the desk talking about you know how important Torzi is to this Mouse team. As the opera on Ancient on a T side that's already restricted, when you start losing two riflers to open up a significant number of rounds and you start losing players and don't have a lot of opening success, as that opera, you just don't have any room to work with. Like, look at where all these fights are taking place. Aggressive towards the mid choke point, aggressive towards the double door outside the B bomb site. Like, as an opera, how are you supposed to get involved if you can't even get around the initial corner? Yeah, and he got pushed through the smoke even into yep. T spawn this round, but you're right. There isn't a lot to, there's a lot to do. One of the huge differences, you know, regarding this map versus a lot of the other maps, just, it really does feel like at times it's controlled by maybe just three choke points, right? The one that Jabby was fighting at there, the one at the door outside of B, and then obviously leading to the A-bomb side. If you control those three, then <laughs> you're good to go. 
Now, one thing to note, uh, too, is ooh, hold, the, hold the phone, hold the phone. Everyone's blind, everyone's blind, but Frozen's taking a bullet to the brain. Not down just yet, but one HE grenade. He can't ignore it if it's to come in, and certainly not the Molotov. A heroic effort to chuck back the AK-47, no pun intended. And over to the A bomb site we go where Shush is waiting. <laughs> it's like, I can't use this gun anymore. Oh, ooh. that is a transfer and a half, taking down JDC. He just, <laughs> we've been seeing that more recently. Just kept shooting. I was going to say, the, the only time, Mouse has only tried once, because uh, I highlighted kind of a lean that Heroic was having on defense towards mid in the B bomb site, leaving A like a uh, pretty wide open to start rounds. Mouse has only tried to go to the A bomb site with any kind of pace behind it and, and speed. And it was when they had like Tech Nines and one AK 47 maybe, and then like light armor, just, uh, just kind of a half buy. Now, I don't know if it would actually work out. Heroic's actually started playing a player there at the initial uh, start of the rounds as they've switched things up to give a new look, but. At the moment, it's probably hard to find options if you're Mouse, if you're Dexter. Kind of like if you're doing aggressive driving in a really beat up rusty vehicle, the other drivers are going to kind of like lean away from you in their Mercedes, like they're not going to want to. Yeah, they're like, you. this guy's crazy. Let's yeah. uh, let's let him pass. A little let's bit like that, but with tech nines and <laughs> pistols. <laughs> they have nothing to lose, basically. Exactly. So that's. um. It does feel like a, a rusty, broken down vehicle at the moment on the side of Mouse. A little pit stop here for them. It's certainly not what they would have uh, wanted to, to get done here on Ancient, especially this is their map pick in the series. Uh, third time out called by Mouse as well to try and figure things out and get back to back on uh, back on schedule, back on something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do need that. And Heroic, they, there's not much to change right now. There's no, there's not a lot, but they can switch a little bit between having a little bit, you know, more of a drawn back defense, maybe in some of the rounds, if they can guess that mouse economy is not going to be great, maybe you let them have some more of the map because you, there's no point in charging maybe into a tech line or something like that. Um, yeah, and then they can go back to being aggressive at times in the middle or outside. Yeah, they're going to take over this whole part of the map with an ease. Nice little boost. Oh, that deserves a kill, but Tessis is going to stay alive. On 16 health, so the serve has nothing to do with it. No. There's no free lunches in Counter Strike. Jabby waiting. It's got Stown behind him. And with Katie in this aggressive with an M4 down the ramp as he's passed the AWP over to Tess, who's gone to the other side of the map. They can be pretty comfortable, pretty chill. Another smoke just goes down in the B double doors, and Mouse is just like, once again waiting out utility. Speaking of utility, a lot of it dumped in CT spawn. If they ever need to go back and you know rotate through that, there's yeah. uh, there's someone to wait for them there. 50 seconds here. They're, I mean, they could get basically blocked off here almost forever. That's the that's the problem. Another two Molotovs behind this. So if anything ever happens, they're in a good shape for it. Yeah, Ooh. look at this. Oh, I can't believe they still got that kill. Sound got it, and Yabby finds the other one. That's that's pretty crazy that Kadian's even able to to live. Now they're gonna get aggressive on the double doors. They're being pressured from middle, but it doesn't matter. Half the attack is gone. And the superior weaponry wins out at the end of the day. It's 11 to one. This is very, very one-sided and, and brutal to start with. And the problem, I mean, the problem is when it goes like this, even if it, even if in some world, Mouse Sports has a really good CT side themselves, they might almost have no chance to show it. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Well, at this at this at this part of the game, and maybe even a round or two ago, the the focus, the plan has to kind of shift for mouse sports. You're no longer looking to have a good half. You're just trying to carve you out a couple rounds. It gives you some space to start a comeback. And there's no indication that they'll be able to do that. Utility out mid as the Molotov fades. Gap in the smoke that JDC can work around. And at least they've got mid presence. Gonna couple of times where they've actually late in the round there or middle of the round they've been grenading the spot that JDC is in right now not seeing anyone nearby that actually has an aid but I've noticed a couple of times they're gonna Molotov this and, and throw an aid at it just in case okay not quite working out yet but yeah an opening here in the middle would be absolutely huge Torzi is looking up the a ramp or the B ramp excuse me with the op and Katie and super passive as well so they've just been locked in a stalemate those two controlling the B ramp most of the attention in lane most of the attention got to be towards Jaguar Stown trying to make himself a loud target to activate Tess's later on and when the smoke fades the hit comes in that did nothing zero just, damage just disappear that's okay 
Don't even worry about he ignored it. Ignored it. Yeah, a lot of meditation. Appreciate it. Good work. It's down. Oh, the spray trap throws in, and he gets one more headshot. And as you said, that's going to activate Tessus. They had no idea. Torsi, that almost looked like a pre fire. Lightning fast on that AWP. But the problem is, he's still alone in a one versus three youth after getting that kill. I don't know. There are no good choices here. Nothing much he can really do with the time that's left. He's going to go back and check, and shush, we'll find him at the end. So. What an amazing round. That was, uh, I mean, even just getting uh, the, the one kill might have still set up Tessus for a lot. Yeah. But he took but he care of the whole, the whole, yeah, <laughs> he just took them all down. Like, never mind. You know? Well, even uh, the cool thing, too, is like, even if he only gotten one or two, Tessus was still going to be in a strong position because if he's playing from the left side of that opening, from his view, obviously got Molotov as well. But if that's where they take the engagement, they probably still clear Tessus' position when they come in. The fact that he shifts over. Yeah. Yeah, makes them, nice makes them kind of think, there's no way there's two people in this corner on this side. 14 to 4 on Shush, 14 to 3 on Stown. And they love to try and rush this B-bomb. So like we said, it's one of the few things that's worked earlier is the aggression. Did that bullet hit the grenade? I think it might have. Torsi is now on his own in a 1 versus 4, looking to fight at whatever angle he can with the P250. He's going to get taken down, and this is so ridiculously one-sided. 13 to one in favor of Heroic. Kadian and Stown both hit 16K. Yeah. <laughs> Just to let you know. Rich. Rich. Six kills for JDC. He's top fragging for Mouse. Don't say that. Why you do? <laughs> Why are you doing that to them? I just, I, mean, I gotta let the people know. I gotta keep them updated. All right. But you also enjoyed it a little bit, don't you? I did. It was <laughs> nice. <laughs> Round number 15 coming up. Kadian. Yeah, this is his, I mean, now I wish I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> you did. You like, did really come out strong from Mouse Sports. Like, yeah, you can do it, Mike. But maybe not. <laughs> but, but actually. <laughs> but, but actually. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's it's a tough draw for Mouse, obviously, as well. You have to remember, I mean, you know, a lot of the attention on Heroic has been this, this pickup of Javi, but... I mean, this is a team that was top four at all the big events, even if they kind of hit a wall there at that position, still a dangerous team over the course of the past two years. One of the stronger teams we've had in professional Counter-Strike. So even with the roster change, even with the new player, still was always going to be a tough team to go up against. And they're showing why here. This is a master class from Heroic. Nearly winning the fight. Yeah, you're right. We maybe shouldn't be too surprised. Dexter trying to take a little bit of fight on the other side. Going to be swinging deep in that. It's very bold behind uh, that play from Stown. They must win this round. Like, if you want, I, I don't even know. I was going to say any kind of a chance. I don't even know if we, can, if we can go that far. But, I mean, this is, this is you can kind of take advantage of where Heroic has kind of gotten with this kind of a lead. They're playing a little bit more stat patty, let's say. You got to take advantage of that overaggression when it comes in. At least Smiles has uh, kind of beat him on the map so far. They have control of the A-bomb site. Bomb's coming in late. JDC with a nice little lurking donut. Kadian's going to start coming over. Picks up an AK-47. Opens, opens up that avenue for a retake. And there's going to be a long flank at the B-bomb site. But for the moment, this is just a two-on-two. -two, and that's great damage. Yeah, it really is. Kadian trying all the luck. Does have a rifle there. I think you pick up. Tess is going to be finding Bimas. Pretty early in the afternoon. No. Dexter sneaking through, but he's going to be found. Oh, no. Mouse boards. This is their round, finally, to try and pick up a second one, but it's been stolen back and tossed. He's got to feel the pressure right now. He's solo on health and swung against. Tessas will take him down immediately. A 14 to 1 first half. Nothing can go wrong for Heroic. That is dominant. What a statement. We're going to head to a break. We'll be right back with the conclusion of Ancient. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready with the second half. It's coming up. It's Heroic versus Mouse. Well, it's mostly just Heroic, actually, <laughs> Yeah, it's actually honest. just Heroic. In theory, this was supposed to be. Yeah. You said maybe they could have had, like, maybe a second round if things had gone <laughs> real well at the end there. It, it felt a little bit at that point in time, Jason, like, you know, if, like, if your house is on fire and you're trying to grab, like, important things and you... You know, maybe you've got your cat on the one arm and then you grab like a spatula with the other and that's all you could save. That's, that's what happened here. They didn't even get the spatula out. No, they, but they almost had the spatula out. They were like out the door and it got caught, it got caught on something. Yeah. And they had to leave it behind. It was a uh, house is <laughs> very nearly burnt down at this point in time. It's a rough day out here for, <laughs> for it's a best of three at least again. Got to give them that, but man, what a start. This was picked by Mouse as well. We're not sure why yet, but, but hopefully we'll find out. Yeah, that's the scary part is this is this is their pick. Molotov behind Donut to force anyone out around the new curved corners, cor curved edges, curved, just curvatures. We'll go with that. On to the A bomb site. Tessas is leading the way. They're not even messing with Temple, which has got to be quite nice. Look at who's looking around outside of B, though. This is a little bit interesting. Kadian could have a huge flank, although credit to Bimas again for checking it. Tess is going down. Headshot through the smoke by Torsi. And they need this kill right here. They're not going to be able to get it. Kadian is so annoying now on that retake. They're, they almost just need to go right now before Kadian shows up, because it's going to get worse. Dualies for Frozen, and he will take down Jabby. It's a pretty decent start here to the retake. Smoke is up. They're trying to get that defuse in, and it's already happening. Kadian, I don't think he could find the angle. I think they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, they need this headshot right now guarding it in front but that defuse is still happening Stown thought that was it and that's yeah. a huge round obviously for mouse yeah that's uh that's nicely done for mouse and you're exactly right once Cadian's position is known you're just like all right guys let's move forward we have like we have we have a man advantage here they don't have all their forces ready to go nice smoke for donut as well and a good clean defuse and good job from Torzi. I think he actually did just save the president he stepped in front took the bullet allows Torzi to get the defuse or yeah. he'll send the family flowers, something like that. He did his duty. Yeah. Well, nice to see. Oh, a little bit of a rush. Running through the fire, not slowing down. They're committed to the cause right here. And Dexter, good for him that he's a little bit further back. Oh, Maybe not at all. After all, Jabby will find him. But I was going to say, it's nice to be further away from the action when they come charging in like that, because it takes a little bit of a speed out of a hit like that, as opposed to if you're all the way up committed to it, then you're going to be feeling the full force of it. Good round, good cancellation there from uh, Bimas, able to take down four of them. Okay. That's... I mean, it's a long, long road back. But... It's not even worth mentioning the road yet. No? They're still packing things up. They're still looking for that spatula. <laughs> Rummaging around the charcoal building, <laughs> trying to trying to figure out what's going on. It's, it's grim. It's grim out here. 14 to 3. AK-47's out for Heroic with that plant in the booster round. They've got the funds, they've got the money, and very, very convincing out of the gates, fast paced towards A. Looks like JDC is going to be the main defender again back towards CT spawn, but Heroic slowed it down for some reason. They saw something they didn't like. Yeah, I'm not sure what either. I think they might have just been trying to fake it out, make some noise so the player and Donut would hear them and make sure the defense is just going to respread across the map so when they actually do end up attacking mid, there's not an extra player here. They're not pushed all the way down to the base of it. So coming back in, you can see Torzi's maybe the first point of contact. He's deep behind the stairs, behind the red room. Frozen over on Donut still. Very limited on the nades on that mouse side. So that's a little bit interesting to think about. Got to be careful that they have at least one nade, maybe a smoke left if there's going to be some kind of a defuse situation that helped them out last time. Going to be using one of them out there on the A-bomb side to try and block off anyone. Still 50 seconds though. And they have a lot of mid presence right now. Oh, the timing there is brutal for Jabby. And he's even better, Dex is going to see nobody else. Ooh, here we go towards Donut. Good smoke from Frozen. Nice time to it. They've got to call an audible. A little bit of a detour up the stairs in middle, but they're going to run into a lot of bodies here. Torzi's just the first. Can only spray down one. Smoke is going to block up a Moss, but JDC's here. Kadian's got to turn now. And Shush finds the final kill from A main, and that round was going nowhere for Heroic. Nicely done from Mouse. Yeah, real good stuff. And a little bit of a change of plans. You could see in the middle of it, they're like, oh, let's try and go middle. But a lot, this is kind of the problem, isn't it? If you haven't taken anyone else down, it's a good chance that middle is going to be occupied by both players, defenders from the A and the B bomb site. So it could get a little bit tough 
14 to 4. And uh, it'll be interesting to see when, when, if ever, Mal's forced Heroic to kind of switch a few things up on this T side, because at the moment it feels a little bit to me like they're, they're kind of going with the scoreline like this. They're going for like the knockout punch, right? Like they're just trying to hit the uppercut and actually just win it straight off that. And actually, speaking of uppercuts, that might be it. How does he win that? I'm pretty sure that was being called by the people in the middle. I think they knew that Jappy had run past that. He ran through two Molotovs to get there, and he still got the kill somehow. The bomb has been planted. This actually is a little bit dangerous. Yeah, but look, three players in Donut, and Shush is like, what, gonna flank Donut? Like, I don't, that makes I don't, sense. I don't know. Sense, yeah. I don't know how heroic Here actually. I don't know how heroic wins this. Well, now they've changed their minds. They're at least going to put one of them in the middle. Then that is a lot better. Dexter is out of the round already. They have another smoke that they're going to set up for the bomb and tapping it once just to pressure a pile of people out. Nice read again. I feel like Bimas is checking all the corners these days. They try to come for the smoke, running out of bullets though, and they got to be careful that defuse. They manage to get it through just as the stabbing begins, and that is uh, well. That's gonna help out just a little bit, but man, that is so close. Yeah, that look from Sacron said everything. Just a little like, oh, thank God you got on that bomb when you did. Yeah. They were a little late to start sticking it inside of the smoke, but yeah, I mean, there's not enough bullets in that M4 any longer to stop that kind of a push through multiple smokes, but the defuse just comes in time. A little bit extra money over to Stown. 14 to five. Scary considering there was Almost nothing really going into that round from this from the side of Heroic, but just uh, yeah, running through a couple of Molotovs and that's it. They're kind of trying to put some speed behind it again. JDC alone in the bomb site. Frozen might have been a very important kill to get there before the bomb even goes down, so might have given his team a little bit of a chance here. He's going to be Molotov out of that one. Tess is taking the fight up close. They can't even plant the bomb yet because this retake is basically happening before they even got a chance to. So might be another tough call here for them to try and get out of the round. Torsi very nearly burning alive, but Frozen goes down to Stown and suddenly it's a two on two. Tess has played a perfect round so far, forcing back all this aggression, finding one kill and neutralizing Torsi's AWP as well. So post plant situation and Stown is in the power position. Yeah, hard to get rid of. Torsi trying again, but now it's on Bimas. One versus two to try and keep them off map point. Bomb is ticking slowly in front of him. He does have a Molotov. That's a little bit dangerous. Okay, he put up the... Afterwards, he can still put it out himself, but the problem is he has to spend some time doing that, and Stown's going to be holding that angle with an AWP, and it's 15 on the board for Heroic. Yeah, nicely done from Tassas. I love that round from him. Played it super well once he got to the default plant boxes and just handled business. Stown even picking up the op off the dead body of Torzi that he just eliminated. Okay. <laughs> Blank pages, I like that. Good for Cadian. <laughs> it's like we... Oh, yeah. they actually have stuff on them. Would have been funny if it was all blank. It's like we brought no level of homework to this fight. <laughs> 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 we didn't study with this test at all. And we're still going to ace it. <laughs> 15 to 5. And Tessus going to check out those bright lanterns in there. Yes, the lanterns were buffed in this most recent update. They have given more light to the ruins of ancient. We'll get into future mixed reality stuff. We can get scented, scented candles in there. An audience can, can feel it too, you know? Okay. People are working on that. How many years we got on that one? It's all, that technology has already been developed. It's already, they're already working. It's already out there in the world. That's important. That is what your Counter Strike needs. The mask goes down. Look at the funds here on the side of Mouse. Just as a contrast to what was happening when Heroic were playing on the CT side, when they had a lot of money right away, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, it just uh, just the fact that they can't even continue the fight here with rifles is pretty devastating. Three to five here in this round, and Heroic have a lot of time. They can just hang out, wait, see if there are going to be more Mouse members showing up somewhere. Well, I mean, these kills, the, these first initial kill and the second one, the second follow-up came so early in the round that there's just time to sit here and pause and wait for the follow-up play. 30 seconds on the clock. This flank is just barely going to miss its timing. Complete control of middle, and Heroic is about to occupy the space that JDC left at the A bomb site. He spotted Cadian, and that's a nice shot with the deagle. Three on three post plant, and the map is on the line for Maus. Yeah, the map. Their map. That they did pick. It's down forward, aggressive position. They're not even ready for it. Even Torsi, who knew someone was in there, not able to get the AWP out in time. So JDC on his own, one versus three. 
Puts up a little bit of an A, but it's down Ooh. to close it out in a brutal victory for Heroic here on the opening map in this best of three. Yeah, that's, there's nothing more to say about that. Yeah, blink and you miss it. That's impressive from Heroic. Their opponent's map pick, they've snatched it away with uh, convincing fashion. We're going to head to a break. That's just map one. When we return, we'll get map two underway. We'll see if Heroic can book a ticket for the group stage of IEM Cologne.